Cannabis Health Radio is a podcast based around a single guiding principle, confirmation bias. You can depend on your joint hosts, Ian Jessup and Corey Yelland, to bring you exclusively positive news from the cannabis health movement. And if something doesn't quite fit the narrative, you needn't worry because they'll find a way to make sure that cannabis comes out smelling like roses. Well, maybe not exactly like roses, but you know what I mean. There are currently 280 recordings of the Cannabis Health Radio podcast, and I won't be breaking this down episode by episode. A lot of the stories are about people who are suffering from diseases that make them feel bad, and I'm not going to sit here and contest the fact that people who take drugs and get high feel good. And that probably explains why cocaine, heroin, amphetamines, and psychedelics have all at one time or another maneuvered their way into pharmacies for somewhat dubious reasons. Take this classic example of one night cough syrup containing alcohol, chloroform, morphine, and cannabis skillfully combined with a number of other ingredients, or maybe don't take it. But in all seriousness, there is some evidence from clinical trials showing that cannabis and derivatives of the plant can relieve pain. But it's not the only drug that reduces pain and it has some serious adverse effects. And there's also some other evidence for increasing appetite and reducing nausea in some patients. But what I really want to talk about here is my favourite subject, which is the Soviet MiG-25 interceptor of the 1970s. Actually, I'm just checking my notes here. I'm going to have to talk about my second favourite subject, which is cancer. Can cannabis treat cancer? And I don't mean treat the symptoms like an allopathic doctor would. Can cannabis treat cancer? And I don't mean treat the symptoms like pain or lack of appetite. I mean, can smoking a joint or eating cannabis oil or taking a cannabis suppository reverse the growth of tumours or halt disease progression? And listening to this podcast, you'd certainly get that impression. There are lots of stories about people who took cannabis and they're now cancer-free, so I guess that's it then. Case closed, cannabis cures cancer. Okay, I feel like I'm going to have to put in some more effort here, or we'll never get enough watch time to put adverts for mobile games in my videos. So let's start with episode 275, which I picked completely at random. The description says she rejected chemo and radiation and was a no-show for surgery. Instead, Jenny from New Hampshire decided to take her health into her own hands and began taking cannabis. Today, her mammograms are clear. Okay, wow, well that sounds like a powerful story that demonstrates the efficacy of cannabis. Can we stop now? Maybe let's play some of the episode and stretch this out a little longer. I had and I had to wait a while, a little while, because that was in November. I saw the doctor in December, so it was January thirty first. I did have surgery for a lumpectomy, and um, which went fine. I did have surgery for a lumpectomy. Well, I have to say that the description of this episode doesn't exactly match with her version of events. That seems like kind of the opposite of no show. So maybe it was the surgery to remove her cancer that was the cure in this case, but let's choose another random episode. How about episode 26? A nurse cleared herself of breast cancer with cannabis oil and other natural treatments. Okay, let's take a listen. So I... I'm a Hatha and Kundalini yoga instructor, and I used all all the things that I've learned. And I started gonging. I have a 32-inch gong that I purchased, crystal bowls, and I would just sit with myself in meditation, and I would visualize Pac-Man inside me eating up every cancer cell. I still do a lot of visualization, and with my patients as well, because I feel that if you don't go inside and get to the bottom of why you have this diagnosis, then all you're doing is putting a bandage over it. I don't care what modality or modalities you're using. If you're not willing to look at what has caused this, then you will not, I don't feel that you will heal. You might, you know, for five years or 10 years, but you hear and see all the time that cancers come back and I believe that's why. That's what I believe to my bones. I think you've got a a point there. All right, wow, this is long and tedious. 
But I wonder what Paula's up to today, though. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. She died at 52 a few years after this podcast was recorded. What about episode 64? Another nurse uses cannabis oil for her stage 4 duodenal cancer. Doctors told her that even with chemo, she would only have two years to live. What saved her from that death sentence was cannabis oil. Today, she is cancer-free. Actually, yeah, minor correction, she's also dead. Well, how about episode 136? Rectal cancer that metastasized to her liver was cleared with cannabis oil. Uh, also dead. Episode 178 featured this guy with a gruesome photo of the tumor that he was apparently successfully treating with cannabis, and yeah, this guy is definitely dead. Episode 218, also dead. Episode 183, dead. Episode 104, dog. Episode... <laughs> All right. Let's stop. I'm being interrupted by the sound of a cannabis booster typing a comment so furiously I can even hear it from the future. They're saying that this isn't fair because I'm not picking stories at random. I'm selecting certain episodes from Cannabis Health Radio that seem to undermine the narrative. Okay, you caught me. The episodes I chose weren't really random. And you're right, selecting only stories that fit a predetermined set of criteria is unfair and that can lead to false conclusions. And that's why Cannabis Health Radio is such a fundamentally stupid exercise. The entire project is sustained by an effortful and conscientious application of cognitive bias by two people who are presumably too stoned to know any better. Ian Jessup and Corey Yelland only solicit interviews with people who believe cannabis helped them or their pet, and they have no idea how many people tried to cure their cancer with cannabis and failed. Ultimately, dead people don't ring into podcasts, and as I've said before, they don't leave YouTube comments. Brain-dead people, on the other hand, do leave YouTube comments. Okay, so another problem I can see in so many of these stories is that even when a cancer appears to be genuinely cured, there's an assumption among the hosts, the guests, and presumably most viewers that when a mixture of treatments has been used, let's say surgery, chemotherapy, and cannabis, it was the cannabis what cured the cancer every time. I'm sure there's a fancy name for this type of cognitive bias too. And one more thing that keeps coming up in these podcasts that you see so much in alternative health circles is this emphasis on the number of years, months or days that someone was given to live by their doctor. I've always found this logic quite curious, to be honest. Skeptics of conventional medicine seem fit to ignore essentially anything that their doctor tells them, but estimates of their survival that could never be accurate are treated as objective yardsticks, even by people who think their doctor's trying to kill them with chemo. And if you look at survival data from any trial that recruits people with the same stage and type of cancer, you'll see that survival times always vary widely. So what are we left with? Well, it's another ragtag collection of stories masquerading as evidence. And even though I didn't pick those episodes at random, it does go to show that even when the potheads get to pick the winners, they still end up with a load of duds in the mix anyway. And over the next few years, we can expect a great many more of these cancer-free with cannabis interviewees to pass away from their disease. So does cannabis cure cancer? Well, the simple answer is probably not. And I would recommend an article by David Gorski, which summarizes the state of the science in 2014. And to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't advanced much since. There are some preclinical studies with mixed results. And bear in mind that most treatments that are successful in the lab don't work in people. There was also a clinical trial where THC was infused into the brain of some people with cancer after surgery and everyone died, although it was argued that they died more slowly than they otherwise might have. Hi everyone, it's me from the future with a quick word. Before uploading this video, I had one more check for human trials and I came across this cancer research blog that links to a press release from GW Pharmaceuticals. Back in 2017, they released some data from a trial using Sativex for brain cancer, which they said extended median survival by a modest but apparently significant amount. Now, the results from that trial of 21 people have never been published in an academic journal, or at least I can't find them, and that's usually a pretty big clue. Anyway, the press release didn't mention any remarkable responses to the treatment, so I think it's fair to assume that the patients in both groups passed away. And since I'm recording an additional bit of audio here, I just wanted to mention that I'm aware that the border between recreational and medicinal drugs is somewhat porous, and I didn't mean to be too dismissive of the positive effects that psychedelics or cannabis might have in people's lives. I'm really trying to focus in on the specific claim that cannabis can cure cancer. Anyway, back to what I recorded yesterday. 
So why did I make this video? Well, to me, the upshot is simple. There's no good evidence that cannabis can treat cancer. That doesn't mean that it's impossible, but I think it's fair to say that it's unlikely. Meanwhile, conventional treatments like surgery, radiation, and yes, even chemotherapy have been repeatedly demonstrated to cure cancer using the most stringent study protocols. And here's what really troubles me. There are people who have operable tumors that are rejecting a simple surgery to save their life in favor of cannabis. And they're basing this decision on things they've heard on the internet. And there are also people foisting cannabis on their children who often have cancers that would respond very well to chemotherapy. Now, I'm often accused of telling people what to do. And just to be clear, I'm not trying to do that. If you want to smoke a thousand blunts, well, go right ahead. But in my humble opinion, you should probably align your expectations with the evidence. And stories of people who supposedly beat cancer with cannabis don't count, especially when so many of them are dead anyway. Wait, don't go yet. This is the best part of the video where I ask you to subscribe, like the video and leave a comment. This is how channels grow on YouTube. So if you check in on my videos when you see they're uploaded and they give you five minutes of entertainment, make sure to actually rate the video up. It's the difference between page one or page two in the YouTube search results. And I can only justify spending the amount of time that I do making these videos if people actually watch them. Oh, and one more thing, there are now 32 videos on my channel. That's crazy. And I've worked really hard on all of them. So if you're new to my channel, take a look. There's lots of interesting stuff on there.